We have now Senator Heinrich. Moving on from that little bit of theater, um, Mr. Shaw, let's start with why we need an LPO. Why doesn't the private sector do this? And what is the value of the loan program office? Senator, thank you for your question. Uh, the loan programs office was originally uh, established in the 2005 Energy Act because what we realized was that the Department of Energy was extraordinary and still is extraordinary at invention, but that we haven't been um, as extraordinary at getting those technologies commercialized here and tied to the American worker. Uh, part of the reason for that is because our commercial banking system really doesn't want to take any perceived or actual risk in scaling up technology. And so the Loan Programs Office uh, sits to be able to evaluate these technologies and to help commercialize them here. Our remit is only on American soil, so we can only fund projects uh, that are uh, scaling up technology here. And we have been active uh, across the board, as the, uh, the chairman suggested, um, in nuclear power, advanced fossil projects, hydrogen, uh, renewables, and many other sectors. So uh, for either of you, for years we saw American manufacturing and capital flow out of the United States. Um, particularly to China, but to many different parts of the world, Southeast Asia. Uh, and today we're seeing, to some degree, that pattern reversing. That's a policy win. How do we protect the American taxpayer and our American intellectual property while that occurs? Well, well, well Senator, thank you for the question and the focus on manufacturing. And it, it's still fairly early days, but you're right. Even the Wall Street Journal has talked about the manufacturing renaissance in the United States. And that's, almost, that's before the Department of Energy money is, is being deployed. So that, 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 that. Let's start there. What's the scale of that? Since the Inflation Reduction Act was passed, how many factory announcements have we seen? How, many, uh, oh, how I, much private capital? I thought, you know, I, we, we can get you a, a more accurate number, but the number I, is $100 billion or, or, or more. Uh, Jigger, and do you have? Growing by the day. Yes, exactly. Um, and that's also an indirect impact of the Inflation Reduction Act has led to that manufacturing in, in anticipation. But you asked, how do we uh, protect, and this gets back to the vetting center and and my colleague, the Inspector General's uh, comments. And I can just say, being more involved with the what we call the equity side of the house, the financial assistance, um, the vetting center process has, has worked for us. We are, we are going through that. Most of the programs we have are more, more uh, sure technology, so it's more about Chinese uh, ownership than it is about proprietary technology, although we have that in long duration energy storage. And, and, and we work with the vetting center, and, and they uh, they they are they go through all our projects. They have a uh, they they access the intelligence and counterintelligence, and and so far, if you look at you know the recent selections that we've announced, I, I, you know I think the process is working. It there's always room for improvement. We look sure. forward to working with the inspector general. But one way I, to measure uh, whether things are working, obviously, is is return on investment. So, Mr. Shaw, what's the you know, what is the track record of LPO generally, and then more recently, if you can, if the data allows, in terms of return on an investment? Yeah, thank you so much for that question. Uh, the, the Loan Programs Office measures its impact in a couple of ways, right? Um, we're not here to make a profit, right? We're here to commercialize American technology. Uh, but the, the U.S. Congress has allocated to us uh, credit subsidy, which is money that we can use for a loan loss reserve. Uh, we've allocated roughly $5 for a loan loss reserve for, uh, for a realized loss of roughly $1, right? And so we've, uh, we've allocated a lot more for losses. And as the chairman suggested, um, the interest income that we've earned um, has exceeded uh, by 4x. Uh, any losses. And so there's a couple ways of looking at that. Yeah. But the more important way of looking at it, in my opinion, is we provided a loan guarantee to the first uh, five 100 megawatt solar projects in the United States. Uh, we catalyzed over a trillion dollars of investment into solar because of the early support we provided when no bank would do that deal. The same thing's true with um, our loan to Tesla on the automotive side. I think that, you know, America's dominance in electric vehicle technology really comes from our early bet on Tesla. I do believe that, that the early uh, investments we're making 
uh, in this particular round, uh, we'll also have that level of uh, success o over time. And there will still be some losses, right? I mean, I right. think that the Congress And we gave should us understand that. <clears throat> Absolutely. You might want to clarify, because I think the question was asked by Senator Brasso, the companies that you had previously been involved with uh, that have an exclusive to where a person has to have a, as a fee being paid to come to those, and you being to that, or if it was a public event. So a public event is a public event. People come. There's no requirements. There's no fees or that. Do you want to explain that at all? Because I know that was quite contentious at the end there. How you feel about that? Thank you, Chairman. I, you know, I I attend a lot of events, and you know, I'm happy to, uh, you know, distance myself from you know any further dinners from the clean tech leaders roundtable. Um, I think all we same is that, like with the clean tech leaders, if people have to pay to have access, that's what they're talking about. I if they're not paying to access as a public, I think you should be able to do whatever you think's be benefit. Chairman, the, the point I want to make here is that I'm trying to figure out what access they're paying for. Since I don't make any decisions on which loans we actually underwrite or approve, um, having access to me is like, you know, I'm, as accept I'm more accessible than a ham sandwich, right? I go to like, you know, conferences like RE+. I go to conferences like Sarah Week. I go to lots of places. Wherever American innovators and entrepreneurs need to meet me, so that they can be convinced that this country wants them to onshore and reshore their technology here in this country, I am willing to talk to them. But what I'm concerned about is the insinuation that the oversight that the Senate and the Congress has done, as well as the Inspector General, hasn't been fully implemented. In fact, it has. And so there is no political influence on these loans. These loans are being uh, overseen by you know, career federal staff. I just wanted to make sure to give you an opportunity on that. 